Hello everyone, uh, in this video we are going to talk about uh, introduction to uh, data visualization in Python together with some um, quick uh, data or uh, data analytics. Uh, now firstly, this is uh, a call-up notebook uh, available uh, from Google uh, and uh, these are located in your Google Drive. You can find here files that you can add or you can simply um, make mounting uh, with your drive. Uh, now here, as you can see, we have some system RAM and disk. So uh, at the beginning, they're totally free. Uh, here you can save your file, download it. Um, you can change your runtime. Now it's standard. You can go with high RAM if you have Color Pro on GPU or TPU um, processor. Because it's just a simple visualization, we're going to use none as CPU processor and standard RAM. Uh, first library that we're going to take a look of is the Pandas library, one of the most famous library when it comes to data science or data analytics. Through the Pandas library, we can learn um, we can uh, learn our data, make it, uh, make some visualization, make some grouping, etc. So we are gonna firstly read the Excel file. Uh, we are having our Excel on the drive. So in the content uh, drive. Uh, now I'm gonna just copy the full path to it. You can find um, it uh, in your mater materials for this course with the name uh, file detection. Now let's take a look of uh, the data. As you can see, we have XYZ uh, accesses. That means um, the values uh, of the each sensor in three different dimensions. So for sensors for chest, belt, ankle left, ankle right, with a given anomaly of zero and one if it's detected. Now we can firstly see the information that comes from the data. As you can see, for each um, column, we we have um, the values that are non null, and uh, they are uh, five thousand and eight hundred and five. The type, so as you can see, the sensor is object. It means that is some string. Uh, the other one are float, and the anomaly is integer, either zero or one. Um, now here we have we have a look of the memory usage of our RAM from the uh, data. Uh, now if we want to select, we can say from DF sensors, we want to select, uh, for example, chest. And here we have all um, rows that are just having chest through it. Uh, also, uh, now if we take a look, uh, if you take a look here, the indexes are not the way of the number of row. If you take a look here, we have 1,000 and approximately 600 rows, but this index of the row is from the original data set that we have here. Um, if we want, we can make a reset index and get the right indexes. And here we have one more column that is popping out. So we can make drop of the index column that we don't need and it's on axis one that means the column so here it is if we want the indexes to be reset uh, now i'm gonna uh, take a look is now function with uh, is now function uh, we are making um let's say uh 
let's take a look is better. So we are making metrics of false uh, and true Boolean values. Uh, it means uh, does the cell have or hasn't um, uh, or hasn't some value in it. So if it hasn't, uh, if the cell is empty, then you have true, otherwise false. If I make sum, it makes sum of all the values that are true, as you can see. For each of the columns, we have zero null values appearing. Uh, now, if we want to make some um, plot bars, let's take a look. I can have anomaly. Uh, I can make value counts. With the value counts, we are making counting zero and ones. If you want to uh, to make it in a given plot, now as you can see, it gives us plotting, but it's not specific what what type. I can make bar plot. It means that we have zero and ones. So if you can see that it's this data set is um, unbalanced. Uh, it means that we have more zero classes than one. And if you want to make a horizontal bar chart, then bar H and you have reverse order of X and Y axis. Uh, the next one is if uh, I want, for example, to make a pie chart, then we can have the sensors and make a value count. Here there are. If I make here normalize true, it means that these values are normalized from zero to one, depending on their frequency. So it's like relative frequency. Now, if we plot this and we say a pi, now this is not a function, just a plot. Now you can take a look of the percentage of each of the um, sensors appearing in the data. Uh, if we want to take a look uh, of this uh, in some uh, description, we have set describe for the sensor column. Now we're having, um, with the help of df dot, I can have a look of all the columns that are coming. So X or Y is the same if I write um, the code like this. Now, the F sensor describe gives us the amount of um, the whole uh, raw data, the unique values that we have. It's four, it's chest, belt, ankle, uh, left and ankle right. The top is ankle left. It means that ankle left has most values. And its frequency is 1,663 uh, rows of ankle left um, sensors. Uh, the next one is if we want to take a look of median. So we are having median for each of the integer values. The median of x, y, z, and the anomaly is zero because the anomaly, as you can see, is having more zeros than ones. And it's clear the median to be zero. You can have a look of mean value and now the mean value of anomaly 0 0.05 because more zeros you can have a look of a median of just one column for example x value we can have a look of the standard deviation also for each of these so you can have a look the anomaly standard deviation is 0 0.2 that means that just 20 percentage of the data is having one as a value now, uh, minimum and maximum also are available as functionalities. You can have a look for the sensor is ankle left and here is chest. Um, here are given the values. Uh, this means sensors are not about the length of the text, it's about the uh, alphabetic order, is counting the ASCII codes. Uh, now, uh, what's left is the quantile, so we can make a quantile. Uh, the quantile are given in uh, one array, so from 0 0.1 the first quartile, the second is 0 0.25, the third 0 0.5, uh, and the last ends in um, 
75. So uh, now these are on axis X. As you can see for X, Y, Z and the anomaly, here are the quartiles starting from first, second and third quartile. Um, we can have a look and from uh, Sky Pi uh, importing the stats uh, and have a look of the G mean value. It's the geometric uh, mean value of I lock. We can select, for example, just uh, floating numbers. So from zero till two. Um, with I lock, I'm selecting here rows. I'm at second. I'm selecting the number of columns. So I can select given number of rows from zero till the end and from zero till the second column here I write on which axis so it's axis zero uh, I'm missing stat s now here are the values for geometric mean for x and y value of the given data um, also we can have a look of some visualization like histogram so I can make histogram on the whole data set here there are for X, Y, Z and the anomaly because um, the sensors are uh, categorical data. The histograms in Pandas are not allowed. We can have a look at different libraries that allow um, uh, the uh, categorical data to be um, automatically uh, 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 to appear automatically on X axis. Uh, now I can select only one column and make a histogram for it. Uh, also, I can add here the number of beans that I want. So here uh, the beans is the number of how many uh, bars, like how many bars to be plotted together and how many. So I have one, two, three, four, five bars um, on a given graph. Uh, this is the, uh, so if I have 10, for example, here I will have 10 different bars appearing right here. Uh, the next is if um, I have some time period, so this data is not so time peri periodic, but it's the plot area you're having all of the data through the time, how they're, how it's going. So. Uh, how we had the X values, the Y, the Z values, and the anomaly here. So it's like the trend through the town, how, where are the peaks, uh, where the data is uh, having um, biggest values, where are the minimums, etc., etc. Um, the next is if I want to make a scatter plot. The scatter plot here is two dimensionalities, so I will have x and y values. And here is the x axis and y axis from the uh, columns that we have here appearing uh, in our data. And here are the points or uh, the given rows from the data. Uh, now, uh, as you can see, if I, I add Z right here, it doesn't matter because this is, like I said, just two-dimensional system. It's not a 3D graph. We are going to take a look of different libraries that um, support 3D um, graphs. Um, as end point, I will tell uh, that we can concatenate two, um, two histograms together. And for example, let's take a look of X histogram. Here there are, or I can concatenate a scatter plot. As you can see, the scatter plot is not seen because the values are very low. Uh, for example, I can make uh, firstly, uh, let, uh, let's say um, 
let's say um, not a skater plot. Uh, maybe it's better if I take one more skater plot of Z and Epsilon. Now we are having two skater plots appearing together, but what's the difference? This is one um, graph, let's say uh, one figure with two uh, subplots. Uh, now, in the previous one, when you have the histogram of X, uh, the skater plot, the values, the dots are really um, are having values from 0 to 1 and are at the bottom, so we couldn't see them. Um, this is some of the examples of how pandas can be used in data analytics and visualization. See the next video for more libraries.